Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I've got Pat Ball with me today. Sometimes I feel like we live in like a car capital of the United States. I'm just throwing that out there. But you're here to talk about antique cars today and a, a great event that's coming to Bristol. Tell me a little bit about this. Okay, um, we belong to the Appalachian Region AACA, which is Antique Automobile Club of America. And each year we sp sponsor a hot Bristol night. And if it's true to form, it's gonna be hot that <laughs> night too. But um, what we do is we, um, State Street shut down and I coordinate with the city of Bristol, Virginia, and Bristol, Tennessee for all the logistics and everything. And they've been super great. Um, there's a lot, you know, dealing with two states, there are a lot of things that we have to take into consideration, the street, the blockage and everything. But we're really excited. It's gonna be on Friday night, August the 12th. And the gates will open from uh, be open from four to six for entry into State Street. One major change we have this year is we won't enter off of Commonwealth Avenue onto State Street um, because of the Sessions Hotel and things. We cannot block entrance to those businesses. So we have a new entry location. It's good in Piedmont Street, okay. and that's going to work great because um, there's lots of uh, entrances onto the Piedmont Street. So we actually enter there at State Street uh, between the Burger Bar and Quaker Steak. That's great. Now, how many cars are we expected to see out that night? Um, we average anywhere between 250 and 300, right. depending on the weather. Um, I've been in, in the AACA since um, 2012 and have all the records and stuff. In, and we've had, you know, right up over 250 several years um one year when it rained we had below 100 but it is what it is that's so, right well you, know. you don't want to get your car out if no. it's raining <laughs> no. i get we no. get that that's true so well hopefully I, it'll be just a beautiful probably hot afternoon and mm -hmm. we'll see lots of really fancy cars what are some of the cars that come out that people want to see the most well uh, it's a little misleading when you say Antique Automobile Club because you don't have to have an antique car. There are antique cars that come. There, there are newer model cars. There are um, rat rods. There's just different, you know, just different cars that do come out. So I think that's what it is, the variety of cars that are there that the people do like to see. And it's uh, there's a $10 entry fee um, if you have a show car, and there's no fee for the general public. So if you do want to highlight and showcase one of your cars, mm -hmm. um, how would you do that? Um, you just pay at the entry gate. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's no pre-registration or anything. Oh, that's great. There's no pre-registration. And um, on the Tennessee side, they'll, they'll park horizontally um, normally. And on the Virginia side, they'll be angled in because we have to leave a fire lane. So, And this year, um, we're going to have three exit points, uh, it'll be Lee Street and 5th Street and 8th Street. Um, so if you park east, you'll head east. And if you park on the west end of State Street, you'll head west to, you know, just to facilitate and um, getting people out more quickly. And one thing the show does is not over till nine. So if the show cars are in there, they're in there until nine unless there's an emergency. And that's simply because the streets are, you know, are shut down and blocked. Yes, that makes sense. Now, how did you get involved in all of this? Um, we have a car. <laughs> we have several cars, but we, we do show nationally AACA. So um, okay. that's we belong to the Appalachian region. And I'm actually a membership chairperson and coordinate these events like this. That's great. Now, what type of car do you have? We have a 1973 Corvette Stingray. Ooh. Oh, nice. That well, we show. Oh, mm -hmm. that's exciting. So, well, it's definitely always well attended too. I yes, think people love to come it is. out and see the variety of cars mm -hmm. as well. It so. is. And we do have um, top 25 vehicle uh, trophies and best to show this year too, so. Okay, exactly. but the main thing is that everybody needs to realize that we do not enter off of Commonwealth Avenue now. Okay. Um, we do go around to um, Good Street and that comes in by the Sessions Hotel and also you can come in by the library or down Piedmont Avenue off of Cumberland Street. So there are lots of entrance points there. Pat, thank you so much thank for you. being on thank the you show for today us. and telling us all about that. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back in just a moment. 
Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and we've got two really important firefighters here today. We've got Adam and Andrew. Thank you so much for being on the show and we've got Andrew's from Kingsport. We've got Adam from Bristol. I love it when the cities work together. It's always really nice and this is a great cause, um, the 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb. Tell us about this event. So th these events are held all across the country. Um, this is our eighth year hosting one here in the Tri-Cities. Um, this will be the third year that we've hosted it at Bristol Motor Speedway. So the event originally started out in Kingsport. We climbed a uh, parking garage there. Um, the event consists of uh, community members, first responders, really anyone is welcome. And uh, they climb 110 floors which is the height of the World Trade Center. And uh, each of them are doing that carrying an ID tag of one of the fallen first responders from 9-11. And so this has been going on eight years. And when did you move over to the Speedway? So this is our third year there. We moved over actually in the height of the pandemic. Um, we wanted to be able to host the event safely. And one, uh, one way that we could do that is by moving the event to outside. So we were able to social distance. And, uh, and sanitize the handrails. And so we, we did temperature checks. So we did a lot of safety measures to be able to successfully hold that event. And it's grown each year since. Now, Adam, you've actually done this. What was that all about? Uh, it's, uh, it was a challenging, but very humbling experience. And you've actually trained for this as well, just as a firefighter. I mean, you do trainings, you know, pretty consistently, so. I can imagine like if you're saying that, that it must have been really, really tough. It was. Uh, we don't have any buildings in the city as tall as the World Trade Centers. I couldn't imagine being at the bottom, looking up, knowing what's up there, completely ready to climb all 110 stories. And it's like, like I said, it's very humbling once you get there and you start climbing and realize how big of a challenge it really is. And every single one of them were ready to do it. It's amazing. What about um, in terms of the funds that are raised from this? Where do the proceeds go? Right, so the event benefits the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. Um, they support families uh, of fallen first responders all across the country. Um, they've actually supported local uh, firefighters who have died in the line of duty in the past. And uh, they also, the stair climb funds themselves also benefit the FDNY counseling unit with the city of New York. So they fully fund that program wow. and then any leftover money will, uh, will support other family services that they provide. And how many people typically turn up for this? So uh, we've slowly uh, grown the event. Um, it was limited to 343 uh, participants, which is the number of firefighters who died on, in 9-11. Uh, last year, we, uh, ra we raised that number to 500 climbers. And uh, this year, we're hoping to uh, achieve 600 climbers. Wow. So if, you, if someone wants to climb, how do they get involved? How do they sign up? So on our, uh, we have a Facebook page, Tri-Cities 9-11 uh, Stair Climb. Uh, it has a registration link on there. Um, our big push right now is the t-shirt deadline is going to be the middle of the month. So we want everybody to get a t-shirt that can. And, uh, and they, the registration link's on there so they can sign up. Uh, we're currently just over 400 participants already registered. So we're hoping to achieve that goal of 600 this year. Yeah, absolutely. So you definitely want to get on Facebook and, and sign up and get the t-shirt if you do this by, I guess, middle of August. And then when is the climb? So it's on September 10th this year. Okay. Uh, Check-in will start around 7 a.m. Uh, with the opening ceremony starting at 9 a.m. And how long does it take to do this climb? So. It depends on different people. A lot of people will rest during it. Uh, no matter how much we pray for a cloudy day, we have yet to get one. <laughs> so, uh, so, but it, we're typically finished just around lunchtime. We actually, uh, we actually provide, um, we, we work with a, a nonprofit called Operation Barbecue, and they provide all our climbers with a free lunch uh, following the climb. So it's a nice way to refuel their bodies after they've just uh, completed the workout. 
That's great. Now, have you done the climb? Yeah, so our coordinators, we climb the day before okay. so that we can get it out of the way and facilitate the event the day of. Gotcha. Now, are you going back again this year to climb? Unfortunately, I won't be able to because I'll be on shift. Oh, okay. But if I, went, if I wasn't on shift, I would definitely be there. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of other Bristol, Tennessee firefighters out there. Yeah, we've, we've worked with Bristol. Uh, they provide our honor guard for opening ceremonies um, and then also assist with medical standby for the, for the event. Alrighty, well thank you both for being on. I'm sure you're gonna get 600 people. I hope so, yeah, that's Alrighty. the goal. I th yeah, you're close, so. Well, thanks so much and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I've got Tony Swavely with me today from the Sullivan County Health Department. Thank you so much for joining us. And I know we've had some rain, but truly we have had like a heat wave of a summer. So Tony's here as the edu education coordinator to tell us all the details on how we stay hydrated and kind of bear through this heat. Yeah, so the main thing is to eat electrolyte rich foods and get plenty of water throughout the day, not just wait until you're out in the heat to do these things, but to keep it steadily going through throughout the day. Um, and then to wear cool light colored clothing, practically the opposite of what <laughs> I'm wearing, but um, just to use your common sense. Don't go out and try to do very strenuous exercise during the hottest part of the day. Save those things for early morning or late evenings and to stay in the shade if you can and get some air conditioning if you can. And if you know you're gonna be somewhere hot to pack plenty of water and maybe some salt tabs, but then also be mindful if you have any health conditions that limit the amount of water or the amount of salt that you can ingest to consult your doctor to see you know, what they recommend for you for that. Now you mentioned the foods and I'm just curious, what are some examples of foods that would be good for us to be eating? Okay, so electrolytes are potassium, magnesium, calcium, sodium. So anything with those, a combination of those minerals in them. And then drinks, it, it, water, you say maybe add the little salt tablets. Yes. And and that's just because our body gets heated up and we're perspiring more than, than usual. Yes, when you sweat, you're gonna lose those electrolytes and mainly you're gonna lose sodium. So that's gonna be your number one, but you're gonna need the other ones too because the first symptom you're gonna notice is muscle cramping when you're low on electrolytes. So that will be a sign to you that, hey, I might okay. need a sports drink or something like that. And we could just carry around one of those water fans that you see yes. people at theme parks, <laughs> you know, that just yes. like, oh, it feels so good. Do yes. those things actually help? Yes, they do. They cool the skin. Um, those cooling towels that you wet and then wrap around you, those yeah. will also help. Um, you can pat yourself down with a, a wet sponge or something like that. So just sit underneath the hose <laughs> yes. if you're getting really super hot. But yeah, it's, I feel like it's been an unusually hot, hot summer. Yeah, it feels like it. the humidity affects how we feel the heat, so that's been a factor as well. Well, thank you so much for all of these great tips, and hopefully, I just have a feeling we're heading into like September and it's still gonna be really super hot. Seems like it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I always feel like whenever we have an extra cold winter, we have an extra hot summer, I don't know. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for all of these great tips, and we really appreciate you being on the show today. And we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.